Bombs comes with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Generations Thundercracker figure. Finally, the mass amount of fans for Transformers out there can get their hands on a Thundercracker classic Seeker mold. Now before this, the really only way that you could get something like this is if you went to BotCon and you got the BotCon exclusive, or if you bought the eventual hand cam release of the guy, which easily cost way too much money for many collectors. But it's finally nice that we're getting Thundercracker in the Generations line, and it really gives me hope that eventually we'll get a single release of Skywarp to complete the original Seekers. So really nice, you see the fighter jet mode, flap down landing gear, ooh, wow, or flip down, flap down? I don't know. <laughs> don't pay any attention to me. Two cannons, fire projectile missiles, and then when you look here at the top, basically says that back on Cybertron, Thundercracker was a master of using sound to his advantage. His fear-inducing sonic booms were tuned perfectly to the composition of the atmosphere. Sonic vibrations from his attacks could be felt thousands of miles away, generating panic in those nearby and deep unease even on the other side of the planet. Um, he, and for the most part, he's kind of a coward. Uh, at least as far as I remember, a lot of them were. I mean, they, they really took after Starscream in that regard, but really nice. You see his tech specs here on the side. Nice generation packaging. I really like the color with this. It's really sharp, really nice. And just to kind of give a little bit of a heads up, I am going to bring out my KO Thundercracker to do a little to do a little bit of a comparison between the official release and what you get if you buy that KO version. So stay tuned for that. Let's get this guy open and see how cool he actually is. Okay guys, so here we have Thundercracker opened up and out of its packaging. And I gotta say that the color on here is just absolutely gorgeous. I really hope my camera is picking up the nice deep blue color that Thundercracker is. This is how we should look. I really love this coloring on this guy. Just overall fantastic. Now everybody has seen the general secret mold before, so it's nothing too spectacular, but it's a mold that works. A lot of people are probably getting sick and tired of this, seeing how this mold goes all the way back to the original classics line. But as I said, this mold really works nicely for this figure. Now in terms of a comparison, here he is next to the knockoff Henke version of Thundercracker. Which really, this was the only real affordable way that somebody could get their hands on the Thundercracker figure without spending the ridiculous amount of money that the actual Henke figure cost. And as you can see, much different coloring on it, much deeper. This is a much more light color. I love the Decepticon symbols on this. The Decepticon symbols on this one are just the purple, you know, with no highlight, but the highlighted purple on here just looks so nice with the silver throughout there. Now, I never had an actual Henke Thundercracker, so I don't know how close this is in terms of paint scheme and coloring and things of that nature, but from what I understand, it's very close. One thing that he doesn't have is uh, he's got this Decepticon logo on the nose cone. This guy does not. Um, and the silver paint on here is just so much nicer and so much more reflective than the original KO Seeker, if you can call it original. Flip around here on the bottom, and again, that you see that the uh, light coloring kind of goes through. Even with the missiles, you got the nice dark blue missiles here. And obviously, you know, I mean, the silver is just so much nicer on the obvious official released Hasbro version of Thundercracker. So that's pretty nice. Just again, an overall fantastic use of this mold. I, I doubt I'd ever get sick of this. Um, I mean, obviously, we pretty much have all of them now in terms of the Seekers. Like I said, all we really are hopeful for now, at least in my opinion, is a Skywarp, who was released, but was released originally in a two-pack with Ultra Magnus, which goes for a ridiculous amount of money at this point in time. So to transform him, it's very simple. You guys have seen it a million times. I'm not going to dwell too much on it, but uh, he does still have his missiles that fire and go, Pshoom! and the other one, it's, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to do it on the other one. Pshoom! <laughs> just fantastic absolutely love it but the transformation is so very simple with these and i've done it so many times and you guys have probably done it so many times that you probably don't even really need to see me actually doing it but because that's the nature of what i do i could probably just link it to another video but i just thought i would do it and talk to you guys so how's everybody doing hi how are you things like that here's his legs and um yeah i mean it's nothing special it's it's a mold that like i said still works to this day and still comes across very nicely fold away his little uh his landing gear nipples 
<laughs> yeah, I said landing gear nipples. What of it? Fold that little bit down. I mean, this is just a fantastic looking figure. It's absolutely gorgeous looking. And the coloring is so perfect. The coloring is just, it's absolutely perfect on this figure. And uh, here you have him in his robot mode. The, just the dark blue coloring on her, just, it just looks so spectacular, it looks so nice. And, and the silver is a fantastic looking silver. I really like it. Then you just take these and you, you drop them. I always have to drop my figures. If I don't drop a figure in a review, something's not going right. Um, one thing that I have noticed is that these peg holes are really kind of tight. I know that on the original Henke versions, these were very loose and the guns would not stay in to save your life. And that really upset a lot of people because you pay a lot of money for that Henke figure and nothing was going well with it. These legs are super tight, super tight joints on these, almost a little too tight, but they are, th this is fantastic. It doesn't really show any mold degradation whatsoever. This is just an overall fantastic figure that really seems as if it's a very early release. And by that, I mean this thing has been reproduced so many different times that you would think that the mold would start falling apart, but it really hasn't. It's just wonderful. Now, uh, I'm gonna zoom in here just a little bit. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, just look, take a look at that. Just gorgeous. Nice. The eyes are actually painted red. I don't know if you can kind of see that. I really like the little Decepticon symbol that's right there. Just overall, the coloring on here is phenomenal. Absolutely gorgeous paint job all the way through here, you know, and then there's the back and there's the screws. But this thing really is just one of the best looking seekers that I've gotten my hands on. It's just absolutely amazing. Not, none better. None better. In terms of his articulation, it's the exact same. You, you really, uh, his head will go left and right, but you kind of have to use his nose cone to kind of make it move left and right. His arms go in and out. They will rotate, but because of the wings, they kind of get in the way. So you kind of, I mean, you can get him all the way back, but then it's going to push his wings back just like so. But uh, that's about it. Bends at the elbow. No articulation at the waist, back and forth at the leg. And if you move this little bit, that's about as far as that's going. Okay, well, fine, be that way. Um, so back and forth at the upper part of the thigh. They rotate at the knee, and they bend at the knee. And then you get a little bit of pivot here at the foot. So, you know, you can get some kind of weird, you know, not very good action poses. But some i suppose but just overall this thing is just really cool really nice i cannot recommend this thing enough now in terms of a comparison with him in the henke version and as you can see the darker blue in contrast with the lighter blue does look really nice but this is just a much overall better painted nicer looking figure obviously this is a ko so you get what you pay for but it's still pretty nice i mean you can see some differences there's some black paint right on here there isn't any of that there i really like the red detail that he has on his shoulders as opposed to the silver uh, he's got uh regular painted knee pads silver on this guy the one thing that i do kind of like a little bit more on this there we go again knocking down figures uh, is I do like the uh, actual missile launchers on this. I think that looks really nice. But that's the only thing that I can really think of. And then also, while the intake things up here are painted black, his are painted silver still, but he's got the little triangle, which is very, very much like the original G1 toy. Thundercracker had the little triangles up there, which I think it looks fantastic. But this guy, like I said, was the only real way that you could get an affordable Thundercracker. And I only got this one because they didn't have, they didn't announce that they were going to make him anytime soon. And then after I got him, like a week later, they picture surf surfaced of this guy. And I was like, well, crap. But I only paid, I think, like $20 for this guy. So again, overall, this figure is fantastic. If you are a Seeker fan, or if you're just a Transformer fan in general, you really should pick this figure up. It looks perfect with a Classics display, and honestly, this might be one of the best painted Hasbro releases of a Seeker that I've personally had the pleasure of owning. So until next time, guys, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optobotomous. I'll talk to you later.